The food industry accounts for 13% of our gross domestic product in the United States, which is huge. And all of us consume food each and every day. But here's the question, and here's the real challenge. Do we know exactly what we're eating? The question isn't what's on the label or what's on the package. What is it that we're putting inside of our bodies? And I think that's where food defense really comes in. Food safety, obviously, is, is paramount as well, making sure the product that's made is, is processed is safe. But what about how secure that product is? Uh, do we really know how secure that product is? Who has had access to that particular facility where that product came from? You know, from the point in which the actual consumer receives that product, Let's just think back for a second in terms of how many people could have come in contact with the creation of that product. It starts on the farm. It actually starts with the initial seed that goes into the ground. Okay, And so that's some farm somewhere either in the United States or in another country. From the farm, it goes to the processor. That processor could be anywhere in this world. It could be in the United States. It could be a food processor in China. It could be a food processor in Italy. It could be a food processor from anywhere. Food is global. You know, these days, a lot of the products that we get, a lot of the ingredients we get, comes across the borders, just depending upon what it is. The threat of terrorism against the food supply is as real as it is against any of our other infrastructures. Here's the way I look at it. You don't want to wait until something happens to decide what are we going to do about it. If you have good plans in place and you have measures in place to reduce or to mitigate the risk, then I think you're doing your due diligence in, in protecting your food supply. Food defense has taken on a global perspective now. I mean, even to do business in the United States, if you're a food company outside of the United States, you still have to comply with U.S. law when it comes to FSMA in order to ship products to the United States. See, Bioterrorism Act didn't really regulate much at all. It was just more of a registration type of event. But now with FSMA, it's actual regulation. Companies must comply with specific mitigation strategies that the FDA has uh, you know, outlined. I created the Global Food Defense Institute uh, for a number of reasons. One, I've been working in food defense for a long time with other organizations, uh, writing security plans, working with food safety professionals, uh, along with uh, government agencies such as the U.S. military. I thought the timing is perfect now for the Global Food Defense Institute because this is the time that companies can use. Uh, and this is our mission, is to help companies understand, uh, help educate companies, help educate frontline workers, because at the end of the day, when they go out to the grocery store and they're shopping for products for their families and their loved ones, they'll have that confidence that the food that they eat is not only safe, but is secure as well.